Hey guys, we are here today in Valheim. Talking about a few things I'd like to see changed or improved upon as development continues. Now in this video, I'm gonna be trying not to talk about obvious topics, like adding equipped items in our inventory into a paper doll so they're not taking up space, more content in the ocean, or even some of the multiplayer requests, like allowing your fellow Vikings to hold oars on the longship and make it move faster while the sails are up. Instead, I hope to focus on some things that are a little more overlooked or unique. Starting off with arrows. Now Valheim has a decent selection of arrows in the game already, allowing you to progress through arrows as you progress through biomes in the form of wood, flint, iron, obsidian, and so on. However, what I primarily would like to see changed is their elemental or special arrows like fire, frost, and poison. These arrows are unlocked in specific biomes and are held at that quality. And the problem with this is that the fire arrow is an entry level arrow, so its damage is actually not very high. And when you start using it midway through the game against something like an abomination, it doesn't deal quite as much damage as you'd like. And its damage is almost obsolete when you get to a biome like the Plains of the Mistlands, even if you came across something that it'd be good to use against. Frost and Poison are obtained in the later biomes, so they're not currently obsolete as far as the Mistlands update goes. But as the game progresses and adds more biomes, they will also have their damage lower to the point that they are no longer useful. What I'd like to see Iron Gate do is allow you to craft any of these arrows with any type of metal, changing the quality of it as you progress through the game, and keeping them viable in any biome as long as you harvest the right materials. You could still have these arrows be unlocked in certain biomes, just like the frost arrows are, since you need to go to the mountains and kill drakes in order to get them. But as we get towards later biomes, especially the ones that aren't developed yet, they could still be viable by allowing the metal to be changed out, and let that dictate the quality and damage of both the impact and the elemental dot of each arrow. They already have this system in the game, on the cauldron, whenever you turn different types of fish you harvest into raw fish to cook. And the game will read it and select any one of the items in the inventory and change it into the raw fish. Allow this to be done with the arrows as well, where the metal slot is actually interchangeable with any metal in the game, giving you much more variety and allowing archers to have a bigger selection of weapons at their disposal. The second thing I would like done is somewhat loosely connected to this in the sense that I would like armor and weapons to be upgradable farther than they are using a similar system. As it stands right now, fan favorite weapons like Frostner are also going to become obsolete as we progress later in the game. And although you will likely always have a mace that's powerful, some people might like the ice itself or the look of Frostner. And that's eventually going to happen with Mistwalker, him and Apple, Jotun's Bane, and the other weapons that are cool in the game. I'd like to see some way to upgrade these weapons using the different metals to craft it, meaning that Frostner could be made with black metal or with black metal and refined iter in order to make a more powerful version and then make it to where it resets at level one and needs to be upgraded again with those materials in order to improve it. With a similar thing being done with armor, making it to where you can take troll hide and find some way to upgrade it or maybe lace it with some carapace in later levels in order to improve the quality and the armor class a little bit, bringing it more in line with Fenris armor or the other light armors that are earned at later stages in the game. If you want to be the rogue and use some sneaking improvements in the Mistlands, you really don't have the option of taking troll hide because its armor class is so much lower than that of Fenris armor. And as we progress even farther in the game and the development cycle, Fenris armor will become outdated as well. Now perhaps using the different materials to upgrade armors won't work as well as it would for arrows or weapons because they're all made of non-interchangeable materials as opposed to metal. However, I would like to see something done from the developer side to make earlier game armors not become entirely obsolete and you still have the choice to take them. Not just from a gameplay or diversity standpoint like the light armors where you want to take a troll hide bonus, but it just doesn't have an armor class. But I'd also like the ability to take the heavy armors and make them upgrade so you can have some different looks. If you're playing with a large group, everyone wearing heavy is gonna be wearing the same carapace armor once they get to the mistlands. It would be nice to have some diversity in your look and be able to wear iron or padded if you prefer how it looks, but still maintain some viability as we progress through the game. And I don't feel like appearance slots or transmog is gonna be coming anywhere near in the future, and I also don't feel like it fits Valheim to have those features in it. So I would like some way to wear the armor you want, but to upgrade it even if it is slightly worse than the current biome's armor, as long as it becomes somewhat viable. And as we're on the topic of heavy armor, I would like to see some heavy armor diversity in the game, just like the light armors have. They don't need to have the same special abilities or set bonuses that the light armor has, but maybe give them some diversity between them, perhaps by making some way less than others, some have more or less durability, and the others compensate with more or less armor. You could also make the different ones weigh you down less and change your movement speed to different degrees, giving you a reason to wear a different type of heavy armor 
instead of just taking whatever is newest. For an example, padded armor is made primarily with linen and it's using iron in it as opposed to black metal. This could be a lighter form of heavy armor, giving you slightly less armor class, but not hindering your movement speed quite as much, allowing you to be somewhat of a quicker tank or melee DPS. Another thing that I would like changed in the game is the build menu from the hammer. While I think the hammer and the build menu is a great design and even games like Conan Exiles have clearly taken it into their game because of how effective it is, I think that Valheim's is becoming a little bit too cluttered as they add more and more building materials. We need some form of tab system in order to sort things and identify what is what and how we want to build as we're in the menu. As it stands right now, every time I do a video and I'm going through building, there are many shots I get cut of me clicking the wrong item in the build menu and selecting the wrong things because it's all in one place. It's difficult sometimes in those small images to discern the stone pieces from the black marble pieces or the dark wood from the regular wood. I'd like some tabs splitting them up so you can more easily figure out what you want to select and what you want to build in. This update or change with the build menu can be applied to the furniture tab, to the crafting tab allowing you to sort through the forge and its upgrades or the workbench and its upgrades, or even to the miscellaneous tab allowing you to sort into piles of wood and stones or into your campfires and so on. It would be a huge quality of life improvement and I don't feel like it's that difficult to improve or add upon, especially as they begin to add more and more materials and building pieces into the game. Another thing that I would like to see the developers improve upon and change is for them to utilize their resist system more. They already have a lot in the game, they're just not used, and you can see on the wiki that they go through a large number of resists and how they all operate and work. But unfortunately, we don't see many of these actually utilized inside the game itself. Everything in the game that gives resistance to frost gives the same level of resistance, at least in the wording and the description. While there has been some testing that indicates there are different levels, and different qualities. And then there's no clear indication in the game of what does stack together, what won't stack together, or if anything does at all. So there's a lot of testing videos out there trying to figure out how it all works. I'd like a more descriptive and clear way that the resistances work in the game and for them to utilize more of them. I'd like to see instead of just very resistant to a lot of these things that we see the weak resistances, immunities even, and all the ones between it. They have everything there in the game to utilize and this could be a good way to include the diversity and heavy armor of allowing some to give you some light resistances to things so that they're not overpowering, but they can help in certain situations. And that'll move directly into the next thing I'd like to see, which is changes to the cloaks and the capes in the game, which I think are great candidates for using these different levels of resistances to different things. The problem with cloaks in the game currently is that almost every one of them give resistance to frost, which means the feather cape outclasses every other cloak once you acquire it because it has resistance to frost along with a bunch of other benefits. And this is not exactly a problem as the game progresses that you need to use the newest item. But cloaks were the one thing before the Mistlands that were in an interesting place where you gotta pick the one that you actually like the look of because they pretty much all did the same thing, excluding the trollhide cape, which is its own problem since it's the only four piece set but that's for another time. But you gotta select if you prefer the wolf cape or the lox cape, and they both gave you the same benefits. And then the feather cape made them both obsolete by giving you way more. Cloaks are a prime opportunity to use different resist levels and making it to where the lox cape is light to frost resistance, while the wolf cape is very resistant to frost, and then giving them some diversity beyond that, making perhaps the lox cape way less, since it's not carrying a giant wolf's head and pelt on you. You could also make capes way more in general and make the linen cape very light to give you a reason to take that. The feather cape should also have frost resistance removed from it. Birds are very known for moving to warmer climates as it gets colder. They do not like the cold and they do not like the rain. So why would the cape made of feathers be good against the ice? Instead, the feather cape should keep all of its special abilities, but actually give you some weakness to frost, giving you a choice to be had on why you should take it and if it's the right thing in that moment. As we go forward and we unlock new capes, I would love to see them have much more diversity in them, just like I would like with the armors, to where they can help you complete your build, help fix a weak spot, or be there mainly for the aesthetic. And like I already said, they're a prime candidate for them to utilize the many resists they have in the game to different degrees and incorporate weak resistances, heavy resistances, or immunities into certain builds with the use of their capes and cloaks. And the last thing that I would like to see them change is for them to add magic or iter at an earlier stage. I absolutely loved getting magic in the Mistlands and it was a blast. 
But as you look at the development of the game, the Mistlands is the sixth biome, which means if you wanted to play a mage character, once the game is complete, you're not gonna get your magic until about halfway through the game or a little after that, which can make it really disappointing to wanna be the mage or the wizard in your group, or even when you're playing solo. And there are even some early game foods that are prime candidates for giving you a little bit of an iter bar in the form of yellow mushrooms, or allow you to make some meals in later biomes with yellow mushrooms to give you a little bit more iter and utilize this resource at an earlier point. Now I understand that Mistlands adds real good combat magic and they don't wanna just have ice or fire magic earlier in the game and make it become redundant, but it would be nice to even see some non-combat abilities, such as allowing you to insulate your character from temperatures so you can go in the cold better or withstand the heat better, like an insulating buff to the group, or add a rejuvenating buff that helps you heal faster and just have it be the currently resting buff for a small amount of time. Even if you're not near a campfire or in shelter, you could have something that inspires the group and increases their damage dealt or increases their damage resistances in the form of very weak resistance to pierce, blunt, and slash. You could have a cloak ability that doesn't actually invisible you, but gives you an increase to your sneak ability by maybe 25 for a short amount of time, helping you get by certain enemies. You could even do things like the classic thorny barrier, allowing you to be able to reflect some of the damage dealt to you at your enemy. And these are just some quick and classic ideas to add earlier game magic that's not game breaking or overpowered and doesn't even necessarily help you in combat every time, but can give you added abilities to your arsenal and help you sneak by certain enemies, rest up when you're not near a campfire, be able to go under the ice a little bit earlier if you spec correctly, which could be very helpful whether you're solo or you're playing the magic user in your group. These are just some of the changes that I would like to see in the game as development progresses. And although Iron Gate will likely never see this video, I still think it's important for us to talk about the changes we'd like to see in the game because their development process is open and they do listen to the community. So if there's a good idea out there and it's circulating, they have been known to implement it and put it in. With that in mind, please comment with your ideas or your changes that you would like to see in the game so we can discuss them, figure out what is best for the game, and what direction it should move, in our opinions, for it to be the best survival game there is. Hopefully this video was entertaining for you, and you got something from it, and hopefully we can continue to see changes from Iron Gate that make this game more and more enjoyable, and build upon its already great foundation. Thank you guys for watching, I will see you next time.